uh, interested in uh, confirming my belief system or confirming my preconceived idea. I wanted to know what was going on. And to do that, you have to suspend a preconceived idea because if you don't, then that will edit and censor your <clears throat> information as you as you are uh, going going along this line. And a lot of people with a very fixed religious beliefs will get to a point and they'll say, well, the information is pushing me here, but if I go any further, then my religious belief in all the detail that I've accepted it is going to be uh, possibly undermined, possibly uh, going to be challenged. So I ain't going there. And, and what you need is a completely open mind, not a naive mind, which will say, oh, I've kept someone said it, so it must be true. You, you, you filter it, you question it, you check it, you double check it, but you're open. You don't uh, uh, reject things by reflex action. And when you do that, the information speaks to you by, by the, 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 the nature of the, the repeating stories, the repeating accounts, the repeating situations. And, you know, to, to, to get deep into this straight away, Alex, that you're talking about in terms of, you know, why, why this child abuse, I've, I've written about this for a long, long time um, in some detail. And it does come from what we were talking about last time, mate, which is there are these entities operating outside uh, human sight, what we call visible light, uh, within the electromagnetic uh, spectrum. Because, uh, like I said last, last time, the amount, of the frequency range that we can decode um, into what we, we see as the visual world is tiny. As someone rightly said, humans are basically blind compared with what there is to see in this universe. And, and we eat food. And it appears to be solid food. But what it is, is energy. You know, this universe, the base construct of this universe is vibrational information. It's what they call waveform uh, information. A waveform has a, uh, as mainstream science will tell you, has a, a, the ability to hold fantastic amounts of information. And an, another level of this universe is electrical. It's an electrical level of the universe. Another level is digital. This is where numerology comes in and all this stuff. And then the level that we actually experience as the solid world is holographic, uh, illusory, uh, physical. It seems to be three-dimensional, it seems to be physical, but it's not. It's an illusion of the way we decode reality. Now, all these different levels of the universe, vibrational, electrical, digital, holographic, are all the same information. They're all expressions of the same information. They just take different forms. It's like someone in a, in a yellow dress hands information to someone in a red T-shirt, someone in, in a blue coat. The information looks different, you know, electrical and, uh, and vibrational and digital and, and holographic, but it's the same information. So what we call um, food, solid food, is actually energy. It's an energetic field. That's sure, what it is. sure, and that's so cyberspace. Where, where I'm going with this, Alex, is that um, these entities feed not from the solid, level of food that we perceive it. They feed directly from energy. They get their sustenance from energy. And as I've found over uh, all these years of um, full-time research is that these entities want uh, human energy of children before puberty takes place. Because we perceive puberty as a hormonal change. That's what's happening in, in what you might call the holographic arena, the, the, the conscious arena that we experience every day. But what it's an expression of is a change in the base energy field at the waveform level. And after that, it's not as pure, it's not as uh, you know, ideal for them. They and that's why every energy. culture in, in known human history wants to sacrifice children. Yes, exactly. And, and, and it's all about the child's energy before puberty. Now, these um, pedophiles uh, in, in all these uh, elite positions, uh, the, the vast overwhelming majority of them are these hybrid bloodlines that I, that I talked about last time we had a chat recently. They are um, a, a, a hybrid bloodline which has a greater infusion of genetics from these entities which take a reptilian form. Um, and as a result of this uh, genetic compatibility, again, holographic compatibility at that level, there is a vibrational compatibility which makes these uh, hybrid bloodlines much more powerfully possessable by these entities than, than the general run of the population. All right, let me stop you for a moment because we've got a lot of new listeners today. We're on all across the country, a lot of new affiliates. Okay, let me just keep an open mind here. I read right. Genesis, and it talks about God destroying the life on the earth because 
these entities had come in and destroyed the genetics or the seed, and only Noah was perfect in his genetic generations. Then I read that, and every other culture says similar things. Then I look at the elite who are at, at the Great Pyramid today trying to you know, get its energy. They're, they're into this stuff. They at least believe it. Then I think about Christians. They say demons are these fallen entities that are here on the earth, but you can't see them, and they love pain and destruction, and that they're there trying to screw up our lives. Uh, you're just saying that's real, basically, because, because you're saying reptoids, but you're saying they're interdimensional. So that's basically what the Christians say. Yeah, this is an interesting point, uh, Alex, and a very important one, because, you know, I've been saying this for so long over the years. So many people are arguing with each other. But when you break it down, the fundamentals are the same. What Christians call fallen angels, uh, the Nephilim, uh, the, the demons, are, are what, are what the uh, Muslims call the jinn. Um, and, and, and the Jews have their own names for it as well. And it's what I call the reptilians or, or, or the, the, the non-human entities, the interdimensional entities. And, and when you look at um, the story in the Garden of Eden, I mean, it's a symbolic story which can be found in other cultures all around the world. Just do people really think that the snake in the Garden of Eden was a snake that could talk, you know, going along the ground? This is all symbolism. And this, oh, I mean, funny enough, I was watching a, a, a series on the History Channel uh, only this very week, um, which is called um, Ancient Aliens, the series. And, and one of them I watched was all about the evidence, um, which I've been putting out for all these years, of the fact that the, there were non-human entities talked about in all the ancient cultures, but interbred with humans, creating a hybrid bloodline. These, these Christians out there, these are the sons of God who interbred with the daughters of men. It's, it's, it comes up everywhere. And, and these um, uh, entities are, 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 are therefore possessable because there is a greater genetic and vibrational frequency compatibility between the possessing entity and the possessed hybrid bloodline. And what happens is that these, uh, these, these pedophiles, and it's in the genetics, uh, it's in the genetics. They are attracted to sex with children. And what these entities want, operating outside of human human sight and the conscious conscious mind uh, frequency range, they want children's energy. And, and, you know, it's sick, but let's get down to this. What is happening when the uh, pedophile is having sex with the child is that the uh, entity is using the pedophile as a conduit to suck the energy of the child um, to itself. It's, it's, it's energy vampiring. That's what's happening to these kids. And that's why, as you quite rightly uh, you know, talked about a few minutes ago, uh, Alex, that this child abuse is everywhere. What about you know, my instinct to want to... the lid and the sure. cesspit is staggering. Well, that's what I was about. What about my instinct? Every bone in my body wants to beat these people's brains out. I mean, I have to control myself. Uh, and I don't know why others don't have the instinct to want to go after these people, whoever, whatever. And I remember you like 15, 16 years ago talking about the royal bloodline out of Transylvania and all those legends. Right. And, and, then, and then now it's in the British news that, oh, royalty just a few hundred years ago was eating people's brains and body parts. And Prince Charles does trace himself back to their original royalty to Vlad the Impaler, Count Dracula. And it just gets weirder and weirder and weirder. So even if this stuff isn't completely real spiritually at least at that level which you're saying is interdimensional they think they are I mean, I mean you get into all the iconography of the British royalty and the things they're into I know just recently you went and protested bravely uh, now it's come out in the Canadian news that half the foster children that they take uh, die uh, from the native tribes and reportedly they're killing them and this is in the news that half of them are dying I mean my god how yeah. big is this it's massive because um, they have an insatiable um, desire for the energy of children, and thus they, they need a massive numbers of children. For instance, uh, you know, Belgium, which is a small country in Europe, um, is, is a massive center for pedophilia and Satanism. Why? 
because it's the, it's the uh, base in Brussels for NATO and the base in Brussels for the European Commission that runs the European Union. Therefore, these elite people gather in Belgium in very, very large numbers as a matter, of course, of their work, and thus there is a massive demand for children in Belgium as a result. It's absolutely extraordinary. And for those that don't know, tell them about the cases where, they, where the police won't help kids in the cages who they kill. It's all come out and millions of marched over it well but this is the point it, 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 if you look at the pyramidal structure of everything where everything is a pyramid and and a pyramid within a pyramid um, and and how they're compartmentalized so the vast majority of people in a pyramid be it the police or social services the child protection or or whatever they're compartmentalized to the point where uh, they only uh, have to know as much as they need to know to do their individual job they don't know how it all fits together and when you look at these pyramids you don't have to control many positions within the police and within social services to stop an investigation going ahead into, into, into this stuff um, or, or to target some, uh, someone and cover it up. You only have to cover uh, those positions that, that have the power to decide if the investigation is going to go ahead or not. See, what happened, this is a classic in Belgium. Um, there was uh, a, an investigator who got on the case of this guy, Mark Dutro, who, who was found to have killed children and had, had kids in, in cages under the stairs and everything. And he got on it early. He, as, you know, as we know, uh, that with, with many of these things, like false flags, it, the information really is most vulnerable to come out immediately after it's happened, before they've got the lid on. Well, this guy, very quickly, a genuine man, started to connect, and he said this public, started to connect Dutro to very um, senior elite people within the uh, Belgian establishment. And he started talking about the fact that arrests were imminent. What did they do? They sacked him. They sacked him and um, under some spurious reason. And 300,000 people were on the streets of, uh, of Brussels protesting. But they then put another guy in who completely put the lid on, and the whole thing was, 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 um, was squashed. This is how it is. See, I, I um, uh, exposed a guy called Ted Heath, who was Prime Minister of Britain between 1970 and 74, who signed us into what is now the European Union as a mega, mega child killer and uh, Satanist and child abuser. And I put it in a book in 1998, and he was alive for a long time afterwards. A journalist rang him to, when it came out, read the passage to him, and all he said is, baby, like, must be mad, and nothing else happened. I've been naming Father George Bush in exactly the same way since, since the mid-'90s. And, and the thing is, the, the, um, the ratio of pedophiles, child abusers, and Satanists, two, two um, positions uh, are much more uh, higher in the upper echelons than in the general population because these bloodlines, these hybrids, operate in the upper, it was not cesspit really, but you know what I mean, upper echelons of society. This is why um, um, there's so many pedophiles and Satanists among politicians and people that run the banking system, etc. In my last book, Alex, uh, Human Race Get Off Your Knees, just before it went to print, um, I came across this document, a detailed document, came out of Australia, and um, it, it claimed to be not a deathbed confession because he agreed with it, but a deathbed um, expose of how Satanism runs the world, as he put it. And uh, he was supposed to be a guy in a, a, a major satanic lodge in Sydney who died in 2004, and, and this stuff eventually came out. Well, I can't say if it was genuine or not. What I can say after 21 years of investigating this but whoever wrote it had a stunningly accurate, detailed knowledge of Satanism. And he talk, talked in there about how they bring politicians into this child abuse um, uh, to, to actually entrap them so that uh, they uh, will, from that time onwards, never say no to anything they're told to introduce or campaign for or block. Well, let me stop you right there, David. Last night on the Nightly News, I showed... The images of George W. Bush kissing Jeff Gannon on the head and hugging him at press conferences. The male madam. I showed the oh, yeah. Washington Times and news clips, CBS, where they admitted uh, in the late 80s, early 90s, the call boy rings in the White House after midnight. Same thing happened under the last Bush. That all came exactly. out, the hundreds of visits. Uh, I showed... Uh, mainstream news articles where Nixon admitted at Bohemian Grove it was a giant, quote, gay orgy, where they fly on the gay porn stars. All of this is there, 
And Nixon basically said, you've got to go there to become a made man in politics, even though he didn't like it. And now we see, uh, you know, uh, the the Happy Valley, uh, you know, the Sunny Valley, whatever name. What is it? Sunny Valley? Happy Valley? Uh, yeah, Happy Valley uh, there in Pennsylvania. And now we're learning exactly what I said on Monday. It's just like the Texas Youth Commission. It's across the board cover up. The police knew. They all knew. And now... Probably nobody else is going to go to jail but the one individual they've got to burn because they can bring down the whole system uh, with this information. And, and then you learn that it's, it's again, it's these children's charities that you, you, uh, these big charities for children who are above reproach and the CPS, they can get away with bloody murder. And DynCorp is the biggest global contractor, Dave. I'm going to come back from break and talk about this. Uh, who's been caught, Chicago Tribune, kidnapping kids worldwide. Then they're the biggest private contractor in the U.S. as CPS taking kids. I mean, this is right out in the open. Yes, this is a, this is a, a great amalgamation, a great tapestry of a different organizations and different networks and different excuses that all have the same common theme, getting children into their control. This is why, uh, as the, uh, the insatiable desire for children increases, that now, uh, over the last uh, little while, in America, in Britain, in, in increasing numbers of countries, they have a social services or so-called child protection, um, taking children from loving parents for the most outrageous, furious reasons. Stay there, let's talk about it. The yeah, yeah, CPS is literal Renfield vampire agents coming to get your kids. David Icke with us five minutes into the next hour. He's very gracious to have joined us, DavidIcke.com. Gracious because he's ill um, and he's going to be speaking in several areas here in the United States. In fact, I'll get him to plug that uh, here in a moment. But he's like I am. He's so busy trying to cover the info. He never even gets to basically what he's doing. Uh, but, but here's just two articles I saw today in my news stack. All over the United States, children as young as two are put on government school buses now because now government's trying to make it mandatory that at age two to three, your children are sent to government schools. So they totally have you. Here it is out of Houston, Houston Television. It says, um, four-year-old left at wrong bus stop. And this is out of Channel 2 in Houston. Uh, two miles away, her four-year-old son, and then she got all panicked. And they're saying that's not endangering the child. Well, it's endangering the child to give your child to the state at any age. These public schools are full of these predators. Uh, it's run by predators with a bunch of naive people around them. And then here's another article. But again, I saw an article a few weeks ago where, what was it, a 10-year-old was throwing a fit in the car? And so the mom said, get out and walk the last half mile, and they took the kid. They said, that's child abuse. I remember my mother plenty of times if I was being bad, you know, saying, okay, we're a mile from home, go ahead and get out. I remember when I was 10 years old, her doing that. And that's a way of, okay, you won't shut up and stop doing that, or whatever you're arguing, just you walk home. But see, oh, I'm sitting up to your room without dinner because you, you know, stole cookies out of the cookie jar, whatever. Nowadays, they'll take your child for that. I have a video. It's going to go up at Infowars.com. I just sent it to Paul. We're in Kentucky. It's divorce court, and the judge didn't even allege the parents did anything. He said, you're arguing with each other. You haven't agreed on this divorce. I'm just taking your kid. There are people that want your kids. I'm getting draconian, Draco on you. He actually says draconian on you. And he says, I'm going to get violent with you. And he all gets on this weird power trip. And these family court judges were set up about 110 years ago in England and the U.S., as eugenics judges. They could say, I'm ordering you sterilized. It's all done outside law. And they've been violating the Constitution for a long time. But here's another article, Daily Mail. Government uh, doctors gave 1,500 children as young as five chemical kosh. And I guess that's a mix of different. It says chemical kosh with anti-psychotic drugs. An investigation by Channel 4 found, well, they're they're, they're drugging newborn babies now. So it's all about abusing children, and every wicked tyranny has been. And as David Icke was saying, who can deny now? Who can deny now that every major institution out there gets busted raping kids or worse? And that every institution, big one, is covering it up. These people are probably 1% of the population or less.
I actually went and looked up some of the statistics last night. They estimate it's less than 1%. Why are they running everything? Because that's where they can get away with it. They can only get away with it in the power positions. And every culture ends up being run by a priest class that demands that they be able to chop your children up. Every culture. This is the curse of humanity. And it's not a normal human activity. David Icke, uh, you have the floor, my friend. Uh, continue with where this is going and why you think they're bringing this out now. I asked you during the break and we concur. And then let's get into Iran and the huge acceleration uh, that's happening right now. What's happening with the euro, all of it. David Icke. Well, you see, it, it, this is uh, coming out now uh, in some ways, I, I guess, uh, as you've indicated yourself, as uh, maybe a warning to, to others, you know, this is what happens when you, uh, you know, if you don't do what we say or whatever. And it can also be coming out because it is so prevalent. It is so massive. I mean, you know, I, I've been calling the, uh, the Church of Rome, the Roman Catholic Church as it is now, uh, the Church of Babylon relocated uh, for, for, for decades. And it is, and it's provable fact. It was relocated to Rome. And, and they, they, they changed the name and, 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 and changed a few names in the story. It was basically the same. And they were doing this, sacrificing children and abusing children in Babylon and, 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 and Mesopotamia and all that stuff all those thousands of years ago. And thus, the Church of Babylon relocated is, is probably, um, I mean, wherever I go, I was in Australia uh, just uh, very recently, and the stories are running in Australia about um, children uh, uh, being uh, raped and abused by Roman uh, Catholic uh, uh, clergy and, and priests in, in Australia. It's everywhere. And, and when you are the Church of Babylon relocated, and you are operating along the same lines and the same techniques and the same methods that you have um, uh, uh, for thousands of years, then of of course, you're going to be a haven for the abuse uh, of children. And, and in that document uh, that I mentioned by this uh, Satanist in Australia, a deathbed kind of document that he wrote, he said about um, the way that uh, politicians were pulled into this, that this is a direct quote, politicians are introduced by a carefully graded set of criteria and situations that enable them to accept that their victims will be, quote, our little secret. Young children sexually molested and physically abused by politicians worldwide are quickly used as sacrifices. In Australia, the bodies are hardly ever discovered, for Australia is still a wilderness. And, and what I've found over the years in this intensive research is that in the, in the populated countries, in Europe and North America, etc., although it's obviously there's a lot of... Lot of um, wilderness land still uh, of a type in America, but they, they control the crematoria system. They, they control uh, the, the, the medical system, which, which does the, 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 uh, the, the uh, people that do the post-mortems, etc. They cover every single um, uh, base. And, you know, there was that um, uh, guy who was the um, son of Sam killer in, um, in New York called David Berkowitz, and uh, he... Um, was the serial killer, yes. And he admitted it. He went to jail for it. Uh, but then he started a uh, correspondence with a Christian minister in which he explained that, yes, David Berkowitz, he, he did it. He did kill those people. But he was doing it to, as a front for a satanic coven in New York. And he said this, a very telling quote, Satanists are peculiar people. They aren't ignorant peasants and semi-literate natives. Rather, their ranks are filled with doctors, lawyers, businessmen, and basically highly responsible citizens. They are not a careless group who are apt to make mistakes, but they are secretive and bonded together by a common need and desire to beat out havoc in society. It was Alistair Crowley, of course, a very famous Satanist, who said, I want blasphemy, murder, rape, revolution, anything bad. And what these people have the ability to do is live their lives with a stunning schizophrenia. There was a lady some years ago now who was interviewed on the Oprah Winfrey show who talked about the fact that she uh, was brought up in a satanic family in Chicago, of course, where Obama and Emmanuel and all these people came from. Um, and that during the day, they were pillars of the, of, the, of the establishment. They were pillars of society. And then at night, everything changed. She said, but at night, what was bad during the day was good. What was good during the day was bad. She talked about um, uh, being forced to witness uh, children being 
uh, sacrificed, uh, animals being sacrificed, and all the abuse. Well, they had on. brood mothers. This stuff is happening. It's real. Well, sure, they had brood mothers, but let me just go back and back up what you just said. Nationwide, hospitals have been caught killing people for their organs. My dad told me about this before it was ever on the news. Because he's a dentist, he knows physicians. He said, "Don't sign your organ donor card when you go in to get your driver's license." And I'm like, "Yeah, right." I, I go, "Why?" And he goes, "Well, they don't. A lot of places will actually let you die if you come in for something minor. They'll kill you." He goes, "That's what I've been told by by people." And I said, "Do you have specifics?" He goes, "No, but doctors don't sign their organ donor card." Then it came out on 60 Minutes, and, and the biggest place was Chicago, but it turned out. Austin's been caught doing it and taking people's uh, uh, retinas and killing people that could have been saved and uh, taking blood for 40 years worldwide of all babies. It's now 40 years next month, 40 years, a global U.N. program. They tell you it's a blood test for your baby. Now they admit it goes into this global database. It shows how it's this. I mean, Rick Perry comes out and says it's the law. You must take Gardasil, and the whole media goes along with the lie, saying it's the law. It's the law. I mean, you, their lies are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and more and more. I think they're just exposing all the pedophilia to where we just hear it every day and get accustomed to it. They're well, really was, just just flopping around in front of us. Well, that that whole thing about getting used to it is very very relevant. That, that, that is right. There are people now um, in, in these uh, organizations that, that, that connect in with children and, and, and young people who are talking about uh, the sexual rights of children. And another thing, you know, uh, all this, this, this pat down stuff in airports, it's getting people used to and children getting used to the fact that this is normal for this to be done. It's all part of the preparation to, to push this on where they really want it to, uh, uh, to go. But the organs thing is, is, is another very relevant uh, story because, you know, we had an, an infamous uh, scandal at, at a, Liverpool, a Liverpool hospital called Older Hay uh, some years ago now where they found that thousands of babies' organs, of babies who died at the hospital, are being kept and, and, and not, you know, uh, and, and being retained. Uh, and you look at the, uh, the blood banks, you know, the blood transfusion banks, there's another way that these people uh, get blood. I mean, it, it will go into it now, but I mean, I go into it in my books. There's a reason why these people drink blood and actually need to. Uh, but it, it's, uh, it's, it's massive. And what we're now beginning to see is the scale of it, because all that's been hidden now is, is starting to come out. There, I mean, I said 21 years ago, there is an energetic change coming, uh, which is, is like um, a, uh, a hand going into the cesspit and pulling it to the surface and saying, this is what's been going on. And I was talking about this 21 years ago, and it's happening. Not only is it affecting people in the sense that they're awakening to the uh, aspects and uh, uh, kind of views of themselves. Oh, the awakening is exploding. Before. No yeah. one can deny the, the it point, now. The point is, Alex, the point is, Alex, that the other thing, about, uh, apart from the awakening, is it's pulling to the surface all this stuff that um, they've hidden all this time, that there is a very positive thing going on here. Look at the things that we know now that we didn't know a year ago. We didn't know five years ago. Ten, Twenty years ago, up, we, we knew virtually nothing. And, and it's happening, and, and it, 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 in some ways, yes, they let things out for a certain reason to themselves here and there. Yes, that does happen. But it's also this. There are so many leaks in the dike that the little boy in short trousers um, is, is, is running out of fingers, and, and therefore it's starting to come out. We're starting to get an understanding of the truly grotesque uh, world that has been going on all around us while we were watching the game shows and the sport. I agree with you, but there's the universal law for every action. There's an equal and opposite reaction. The evil has now swollen to where the roaches aren't hiding behind the walls and coming out at night. They're running over you when you're sitting there on the couch. They're now telling you that they're the boss, and so that's finally getting people to wake up. What do you make of all over Europe, all over France, all over uh, the United States, Canada, everywhere they're having radiation releases, uh, AP is reporting, Nuke Agency reports unusual radiation in Europe. It's isotopes associated with uh, fission or meltdown. And they're now saying DU is good for the troops. They're using it everywhere. There is an attempt, and I've had Dr. Busby, who's a chemical physicist on, and he says a lot of his colleagues believe it's an attempt to reduce fertility because nothing works better than radiation. 
But the point is, there. this can't just be accident. Suddenly, the yeah. radiation is being released everywhere. Uh, what's going on with that? There seems to be an agenda to radiate the planet. Well, that's a, that's a, a, an interesting point, because I've gone into this in some detail in, in my new book, Remember Who You Are, coming out in January. And I'm talking about this uh, in uh, in Cleveland, uh, Ohio, on, uh, well, on tomorrow, Saturday, and then in New York next uh, Sunday. I, this comes into my, my, my 10-hour presentation, because I've been ticking off for years and years and years the um, continual increase in the irradiation that humans are being subjected to. Um, uh, even radiation of food is, is being uh, pushed up the so-called safe limit when it wasn't safe to start with. And, you know, this is why. I go into this in some detail in, in, in the new book particularly. When Fukushima happened, I, I looked at it and I thought, this release of radiation is so such a gift to this agenda that I can't believe it's an accident. And I, I explained why it wasn't an accident. Actually, it was it was it was done deliberately. Uh, and that's why virtually nothing's been done about it. It's pouring out now. But why? They want to change. And they, I mean, this is, this is going far out for many people. But hey, let's go there and let's see what you think. Um, I've been uh, coming to the conclusion for quite a time now that there is an attempt to change the atmosphere of the planet. Now, there, there is a vibrational... No, wait a minute. The, the White House science czar admits they've had a giant chemtrailing operation. With barium salts, aluminum dioxide, and other things, and that the quote testing's been secret, and that all the old timers who tested it and said what it was were 100 percent right. They uh, they call it geoengineering the globe. They admit it's secret. They've got antenna farms. They now admit they're spraying things. They're playing God. Yeah, well, this, that, you know, all that you've mentioned comes together in what I'm saying. Um, they they want to change the atmosphere of the planet because um, these entities um, have a uh, problem uh, vibrationally because they're on a slightly different frequency or some of them are actually in in in, in, a, in our in our frequency and, li and live within the earth in these uh, and interact with the elite in these underground bases but the, the, another problem they have which they want to eradicate is the atmosphere of our planet is not right for them so they're changing it and, and, and what they're doing also is that they i mean you've been talking about this for a long time they want a dramatic reduction in the global population and they, they want, what, a half a billion, uh, a billion people maybe uh, to serve them. And they know that um, there will be a certain amount of humanity that will genetically mutate to um, uh, be okay with a, a more irradiated atmosphere. And thus, they're the ones they'll want to keep as the slaves. And those that, uh, that, that are taken out as a result, well, they, they want them taken out. Anyway. Well, David, David, that's actually what all the scientific magazines... They say nothing we do is unnatural. Any crossing of species. If we release more radiation, those that evolve will just live. When we merge you with machines, too bad. They're already selling that attitude, and now everywhere saying we the elite are a separate species. I see it on magazines everywhere. They're saying yes, humanity is splitting into two. Yeah, yes, and they, they want to develop a, a mutated humanity that will take the atmosphere that they want to to bring in the change they want to bring in. They're bringing it, my goodness. You know, heart's not just bouncing uh, uh, radio waves off the ionosphere. It's punching holes in it, therefore letting cosmic radiation in that shouldn't get it's in. It's worse than that. Did you know carbon dioxide is the lowest that it's ever been recorded? And, yeah. and that it's been hundreds of times higher before, just the last few hundred thousand years, 14 times higher, and they're waging war against it, and they're reporting plants aren't getting the carbon dioxide they need, and its levels are dropping, 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 what, from zero... 0 0.390 to 0 0.0360. Again, it's like a science fiction movie. You couldn't. <laughs> well, 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 let me let, let me let me bring up that science fiction movie uh, scenario uh, to you because um, the first uh, uh, Arrival movie uh, starring Charlie Sheen um, had the theme of reptilian type entities. Uh, who had taken over NASA, who had taken over the positions of power, and were changing the atmosphere so they, they, they could live here um, uh, be, because the atmosphere didn't suit them as it was. And that theme is exactly what is happening. Um, I, I had a... Uh, Tell you what, a, stay there, David. This is uh, we got to get into Iran. Uh, we're, this is some wild stuff, folks, but they are doing this in the atmosphere. All right, David's going to be with us for 15 minutes of the next hour, then Bob Chapman on the incredible economic developments.
Now, again, David has predicted with precision the euro, the collapse of that, the bringing in of a super union 20 years ago. Uh, I mean, so much of his regular analysis is so spot on. That's the dichotomy with people because then he gets into all this other stuff. But when you look at it, they got a secret terraforming program, geoengineering. Uh, the elites are always into weird, bizarre stuff. Tony Blair flops around in the morning and is possessed by the spirit of the light. That, that's like BBC News. Uh, they've got weird power pyramids built all over the world. Uh, I mean, the elites are really into this stuff. They believe. I mean, how many rock and roll stars say they believe they're possessed by something? Whatever's going on, the elites do believe they're doing this, whether it's real or not. Now, uh, David, uh, you had some other points you wanted to make. We were just talking about the TSA. Then we'll get into Iran. Then we'll get into all the other issues uh, and the economy and the euro and, what's, and where you see that going. But y you were bringing up the TSA, and uh, when the, and I was saying the point that they're training kids to be groped. That's been admitted. And yeah. child psychologists say this is terrible. A B, I mean, grow up by strangers. B, they're getting killed themselves. But C, they are almost psychically, vampirically getting off on the groping. I've, I've witnessed it. They like forcing it on you. Well, you see, um, just one very, very quick point, just to finish off the, uh, the atmosphere thing. Um, obviously, uh, uh, Fukushima is a wonderful example of how you can change the atmosphere uh, by, 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 you know, exploding one of these things. And um, I came across a, a lady, an Oxford Don, called uh, Dr. Kitty Little back in the 90s, who uh, worked extensively in the British uh, uh, nuclear industry at a high level. And she told me back in the 90s that the House of Rothschild, the Rothschilds were the ones that brought in nuclear power and, and ensured that it became uh, you know, used to the extent that it is. And so they've created these nuclear uh, bombs, in effect, all over the all over the world, um, you know, ready to go off whenever they whenever they choose. So, so it, it is all systematic. This, this radiation thing. But again, talking about radiation, another form of um, irradiating us are people that now fly without taking the pad down. And what, one of the uh, the ironies is, I've said many times, you know, these people in uniform they think they have power, but they don't. In fact, they're pawns in a game. I mean, the, the TSA people are, are just the the. The civilian, well, almost civilian, it's more military, but the, almost the civilian version of Kissinger talking about troops being dumb, stupid animals to be used in U.S. foreign policy. Because while they think they have power and they're enforcing the, 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 themselves upon people, but they're going down like nine pins. I mean, I've got into this in the new book um, with, um, with cancers, leukemias, and strokes. Boston Logan, for instance, uh, the, one of the 9-11 airports, is, is a real cluster for it. Uh, and they're going down because... I've said to people as I go through these, these TSA things, I said, you know, you, you talk, you're irradiating the people, but you, you, you do know that you're being irradiated cumulatively every day when you come on every shift, and it cumulatively has this effect on them, and, and so they're getting, they're getting killed. And the other thing is that um, I, I noticed uh, some time ago, Alex, uh, that in Britain and around the world, but Britain, because I, I, you know, I've lived there and I've seen the change, but a very, very different type of uh, person in uniform and person in uh, dark suit administration um, was, um, was, 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 you know, being employed and the, the nature of the police, the personality of the police, of, of, of airport security, of government administration um, uh, was, was changing. And uh, I, I wondered, you know, I know they've done it, but how have they done it? And what uh, I, I realized is that they, they do something called, among other things, something called psychometric testing, um, which is a, a way of asking questions like in job interviews to glean um, the person. No, no, it's on record. They, they hired dumb, power-seeking thugs and control freaks and moron Dudley Do-Rights. Yeah, and, 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 and the two characteristics they're after, and I'm, I'm, any, anybody who's been interacting with law enforcement and government administration and the TSA and stuff will understand this. One is, is, is a narcissistic personality, which is described as a psychological condition characterized by self-preoccupation, lack of empathy, lack of empathy, the repeating... David, stay system. there. Back in 60 seconds, davidike.com. By the way, you've got a real opportunity to hear an amazing 10-hour presentation. That uh, doesn't even mean you have to agree with it all, but it'll certainly get you thinking. Normally, all his shows sell out. In fact, the one in last year in New York totally did. A huge uh, group of people. 
I think there's a few tickets left for that at DavidIke.com, but the Cleveland one he was telling me hadn't been promoted a ton, so it's actually got quite a few tickets left. Go to DavidIke.com if you want to hear him speak tomorrow. If you live in that area, uh, anywhere around Cleveland, you'll be able to hear David Ike speak. Uh, David, uh, continuing, um, you got cut off by the break. Do you remember what you were bringing up? Yeah, I was. I was talking about these personality types that they have systematically targeted for the uniform and uh, dark sleep professions. Uh, narcissist, a psychological condition characterized by self-preoccupation, lack of empathy, and unconscious deficits in self-esteem. And it's the unconscious deficits in self-esteem that cause these people to act absolutely over the top. When you challenge them, it's like, how dare you challenge me? You know, people getting tasered for just um, asking for the, the, the law that, that they're being arrested under. And the other one is the psychopath, which is very close. A person with an antisocial personality disorder manifested in aggressive, perverted, criminal or immoral behavior without empathy, here we go again, or remorse. And of course, all over uh, America and increasingly around the world, you're seeing exactly that type of personality um, in the uniform professions, uh, policing, you know, protests and, and uh, peaceful protests and what have you, and, and, and with their brutality. Uh, and it's been systematically done. See, they don't, when you want to control the population, you don't want to employ people to enforce your uh, will who have a conscience. That's, a, that's your worst nightmare. You want people who uh, get you, you. You've described it, mate. Who get a kick from from enforcing uh, these things upon other people. That's why they're targeting these personalities. And there's been this transformation of the personality in the in the police around the world from the old school. And any of those that remain, their, their daily life must be a nightmare when they live among this stuff now. Uh, to the to this uh, psychopathic, narcissistic, uh, brutal. Uh, control freak that, that we see increasingly uh, in uniform. Well, I tell you, I should do a news report on this because over the years I've seen the articles, I've read it. I, every time I mention it, people don't believe me. But you can find mainstream news. We're going back about 20 years under federal grants. They will not hire officers with over 100 IQ. That's where it starts. Then they right. have these specialized psychological tests that are between 500 and 1,200 questions. And they can actually, and they say, oh, we're identifying if you're a liar or whatever. No, they are identifying. Before, they wanted tough guys that would follow orders uh, and wanted to protect people. You know, in the old days, it was you weren't in too many fistfights in high school or whatever. You know, your family doesn't, you know, you don't come from tough guys. We don't want you. Or, or you know, uh, but, but now it's they literally want people that relish dominating. And that's why I've been in New York and places and seen women walk over and go, Officer, what do you know where this is? Do I look like a phone book? I ought to arrest you right now. I mean, yeah. it, is, it is just outrageous. They want you to know you are trash. We are God. Yeah, like the guy walking down uh, from his uh, shift at the Los Angeles airport was banging his chest like Godzilla uh, shouting, uh, I have the power. This is the mentality that we're dealing with, and it's been systematically done, and therefore the, the, the relationship, the dynamic between law enforcement and police and government and police has now dramatically changed, and, and they want to push us down this road even to more extreme levels because they, they want their new world order enforced by thuggery, and, and we're seeing it now, and it's not in the future. It's sometime never over the rainbow. We're living it. Well, Hitler, with his brown shirts, hired all the criminals. As Stalin unleashed them all out of the prisons and made them commanders. It's exactly the same principle. You know, what you see is a, a blueprint. I see blueprints everywhere. And, of course, if you get something that works, um, well, why change it? So, therefore, it becomes a blueprint. Therefore, it, you can see it through the generations and in different historical situations. It's absolutely the same. It's absolutely the same as what happened in Nazi Germany and Stalinist, uh, Stalinist uh, Russia and the Soviet Union that followed. That's exactly the, the blueprint, the Chinese blueprint. It's, it happens there in a very incredible way, obviously. If I was a film director and I was doing central casting for a dystopic nightmare future for a checkpoint. I'll finish the story when we come back. David and I will get into Iran straight ahead. All right, we're doing a few more minutes with David I, author, researcher, former head of the UK uh, Green Party. We got into some pretty wild issues, but the globalists are doing crazy things, so who knows? Uh, but uh, we were talking about how, on record now, they psychologically profile police to be um, narcissistic uh, people that want to dominate. And then they also then profile for psychopaths to put them, what they call them, high-functioning psychopaths in the command positions. Now, they haven't completed this conversion yet, but they're starting to get close. 
And uh, Hitler, of course, hired a bunch of thugs, the brown shirts. We talked about what happened with Stalin opening up the prisons and putting aggravated felons and, and, and rapists and murderers uh, in command positions. Uh, this is what tyrants do. And uh, you were mentioning that it's a blueprint. And it is. They hired the former head of the Stasi, Marcus Wolf, to set up Homeland Security. That's on record. You can't make this stuff up. But if I was doing central casting, David, for a dystopic future America under a police state, I would, I would, in casting, I would hire thuggish-looking, crazy-eyed-looking, mean people who would have, you know, slit, you know, their eyebrows down, looking through slits, hatefully, uh, when families drive up to a checkpoint. You know, it's not enough to have them in black uniforms strutting around like third-world countries. They've got to be looking at you with hate. And, man, you pull up to these warrantless checkpoints now. I've actually pulled up to them, but they've got them all over the country. And they'll tell you, get out of that car, get over there. I mean, they just, they, and you watch them. And I've been in New York and seen the Hercules teams, guys in black uniforms with their guns. They just get off and everybody looking at them for, they'll sit there for 10 hours just getting off and everyone's scared of me. I'm powerful. It looks clownish to those of us that are real men and realize just what a pile of weak cowardice they are. You can see the weakness right there in front of you. You know, I mean, a real man wants to defend humanity and strong. They want to stand around and bug their eyes out and, 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 and you know, cops ordering people around. And, and I've been in New York a few months ago. There was, there was a parade out there when I went for a walk. And they were just barking at people and looking at everyone. I mean, if I made a dystopic movie, David, it could not, if the police acted this thuggish and hateful towards the public, and it's not like this in all cities, you wouldn't believe the movie because it would be too over the top. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we have we have reached the the the, the level of of, of almost uh, it being farcical. It's it, it's a B movie we're living through, and these people are emotional cripples. Um, you know, people um, who are deeply deeply insecure have to externalize their sense of success. Uh, so, you know, people uh, who uh, have uh, security or are secure within themselves, they're happy just to live their lives. They don't need people constantly confirming how powerful they are or how important they are or successful they are. And, and so uh, the insecure people, they're the ones that uh, drive down the uh, dra dra down the street at five miles an hour in the, you know, in, in the Bentley so everyone can see them and all that stuff because they need externalized uh, uh, confirmation that they're, that they're, they're okay people. This is why people want more and more money. Oh, we've got a bigger house. And oh, yeah, they're externalizing their insecurity. And you get the same process with these emotional cripples in uniform. They're externalizing their sense of self because by frightening people and intimidating people and watching the people being intimidated, they get their sense of power, their sense of, 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 of how big they are because they're just pathetic. I mean, they are little boys in short trousers. That's what I see. The school, the playground bully. You know, I, I, I had a... Uh, a childhood experience with a, ch uh, a playground bully, which actually taught me a lot about the rest of my life, actually. And, and I, so, I, you know, I, I remember it. You know, and, and what happened, short story, uh, or, or long story short, is the playground bully turned out to be a coward. And, 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 and that's what these people are behind all this stuff. And, and when you challenge them uh, in, in the most, you know, pleasant way, the taser comes out or this comes out, uh, you know, the aggression comes because they cannot stand their... Uh, uh, apparently massive, but actually very, very fragile ego being challenged. And, and, and this is the, the mentality. And because I travel so much, it's everywhere. It was, it, 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 they did the same to protesters in Melbourne and Sydney while I was in Australia in, in very recent uh, days. The same mentality is being employed all over the world because it's a global blueprint. It is. I mean, that's the proof. Now they admit there's global standardization and global in Australia to the UK to Canada to the US, they take blood for now 40 years secretly. Standardization of the electronics. This is global. This is global blueprint. Yeah, and it's very simple um, the way they've done it. I, I explain this in my talks in my books. Um, what they've created, Alex, is the global version of a transnational corporation. Uh, the headquarters at operational level is in Europe, um, in places like Belgium, City of London, Rome, uh, Germany, France, um, and to an extent America, but not as much as you think. You know, what, what they've done with America 
is um, they've set America up for four guys. So um, America fires the bullet, but they're overwhelmingly loaded in Europe. Yeah, we've always been the big enemy because we went against them for a short period. We're set up to take all the blame, pay for everything, and then be destroyed. Exactly that. That's, that, that, that's exactly the story. Um, if, if you look at McDonald's, they have a headquarters in Europe, and then they have subsidiaries in all around the world. And the subsidiary uh, has to um, impose the, the the corporate global blueprint of the headquarters. The corporate so vision, corporate, the corporate message, the corporate handbook. Yeah. You, so you go, into, you go into McDonald's in Moscow or Johannesburg or Sydney or, 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 or London, and you go into the same McDonald's. Now, what these people, uh, this cabal has set up is exactly the same, but it's um, a secret societies and bloodline families. So you've got the headquarters in Europe, what I call the spider, and it dictates the global... Um, agenda and the the, 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 uh, the timeline for its unfolding, then in each country you've got a network of bloodline families under different names and the secret society network which manipulates them and their, their agents and gophers into power. And their job is to impose in their sphere of influence, their country, the centrally dictated blueprint agenda. And therefore, if the same things are coming in, like smart meters and all this stuff, all over the world at the same time. And then there's um, another level in which the subsidiary network in the country has subsidiary networks within the country that control the cities and the towns and the regions. And so it's this kind of uh, holographic blueprint where every part of the, 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 the network is a smaller version of the whole that they, they can orchestrate this global agenda through. And, and it, it's been in place now for a long time. And this is where it's working. And this is why you'll find the same uh, narcissistic, psychopathic uh, personality being being employed in law enforcement all over the world because it's, it's centrally dictated through this network. Well, they're administering the same psychological test, and all of that's compartmentalized. They say the test score means one thing, but decoded, if you look at the test, I've seen articles, it's really, okay, we've got a sociopath, we've got a psychopath, uh, we've got, well, is he a high-functioning psychopath? Put him in a low level, watch him, see if we can move him up. Right. Because, you know, they don't want an out-of-control one. And then they mainly just want dumb kind of, we're the good guys, do what I say or I taser you. Did you see, boss? Did you see? That's kind of like the general group they want on the bottom. And heaven help these people. Uh, it's incredible. Now, we're going to let you go and go to uh, uh, here in just a moment uh, and go to Bob Chapman of the International Forecaster. And I appreciate all your time, David. You're going to be speaking in New York coming up later. People can find out in just a few days at davidike.com. And in closing, we keep mentioning Iran. We've only got a few minutes before the break. What's happening geopolitically there? Uh, the talk of uh, the euro collapsing, France plots, Eurozone breakup group. But the breakup group is just the central IMF World Bank sucking everybody dry. You've got the floor, David Icke. Break down what's happening globally, geopolitically. Well, in terms of Iran, you know, you know we, we talked a little while ago and you put the, uh, the wish list map up there and right in the middle of the wish list of countries they wish to take over in that part of the world is Iran. And so they need an excuse. And... Uh, they've been trying to find an excuse for a long time and they've not been able to. And what we're seeing now is like, you know, with, with Iraq, it was like, okay, we'll, we'll have to explain how they got weapons of mass destruction and, and, and go into a bit of detail and all this stuff. But now they've reached the point, well, look, here's an excuse. I don't care if you, if you don't accept it. This is the excuse. Okay, boys, in you go. And so we now have this ludicrous things like uh, Saudi Arabian ambassadors being, you know, having their attempts on their lives, absolute bloody nonsense and all that stuff. And I think it was very significant that this uh, Zionist, uh, Elena Ross Lettinen, uh, the um, chairman of the uh, House Foreign Affairs Committee, pushed through this, uh, what is it, HR uh, 1905, which basically uh, makes it illegal to have uh, American diplomacy with Iran, um, and because they don't want diplomacy, they don't want an end to it diplomatically. There's an agenda to attack Iran and, and take over Iran, and it's coming out of Israel, which is controlled by uh, the House of Rothschild. It's their fiefdom. It's nothing to do with the homeland for, for Jewish people. That's just a front uh, that the, the Rothschilds put up to hide what they're doing, and they control America. And so together they work as one unit. America is not uh, the superpower that it seems to be. It is the super poodle of Israel, because um, that's the fiefdom of the Rothschilds, who also control America. And, and, and Iran's on their wish list, so therefore they're going to uh, find a way of going in. If they can't find an excuse that works, they'll find one that doesn't. And we've got this um, International um, Atomic Agency now, another Rothschild front, that is coming up with the, uh, the, the, the means and the excuse to 
go into a rant. It's all building up because what they want is a third world war to come out of the Middle and Near East. And um, what's happening on the other side now, and it's starting to move, they want a war between the, uh, the European Union and North America, etc., uh, and, and uh, Russia and, and China. And now we're having uh, uh, the, uh, the Russian and Chinese uh, authorities saying, you know, basically, if you mess with Pakistan, you, you mess with us. Don't, don't, don't go into Iran. It's all building up um, to this uh, you know, third world uh, uh, conflict that, uh, that they've been talking about for so long and they've got now this, this organization called the Shanghai Corporation, uh, Cooperation Organization and now there are moves to bring Pakistan, Iran and India uh, into that and, and so the two sides are being very clearly created which is the, the, the Russians and the, uh, the Chinese on one side and the European Union and uh, North America on the other side exactly as they want and, and Iran if, if they go for that, that has the potential for bringing these two uh, groups of, of powers together. And it's being done systematically because when you get deep into this, you find that the Chinese are actually controlled by the same people that control America and the European Union. Yeah, the, 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 the globalists are playing everybody off against each other to yeah. then bring in the world government. David, I mean, I, Putin's one of their, their people. The Chinese are one of their people. This is what the Rockefellers and, and Maurice Strong and Kissinger. and It's Bush on record. And, it's incredible. David, let me say bye to you in the break.